and we've been waiting for this. All powers. And these are solar panels, so we can charge it on the go. You want the box? Be my guest. Neat carry case. Very smart. Well, you're very happy, you've got your box. That's a smart bit of kit. And what look, we're just about to set off on a road trip. No cars to review today, but it is something that we take on our road trips. And you'll remember last year, we took this behemoth of a power station all the way down to Goodwood. And the guys at All Powers thought, we need to give them a power station. So now we've got the R600 with solar panels. I'm Ben Quirk, welcome to Planet Auto. Power stations are all the rage nowadays. Whether it's something that you can charge, say an electric car, or something a touch smaller that allows you to charge a personal stereo. What decade am I in? I mean an iPhone, and maybe a camera battery charger. You could spend three and a half grand on the power station if you wanted to, but it'd be considerably heavier. Whereas something like this, it's about the right weight. So you can just chuck it in the back of your car, and it'll give you, well, an immense amount of power for its size. And the thing that really stands out to me with this when you plug it into the mains, it'll charge to 100% in about an hour. That is seriously quick to the unboxing. So we got sent the solar panels and the R600 all powers power station. Some like it hot. In a box with a bag of cables and all types of things. So I've already opened it because it's been on a road trip. The thing is, everything is packaged very well. This is our solar panel. I like this. It arrived by courier and to be honest they were very careful no damage to the box and uh, apart from that which we did on our journey but anyway the thing is this is robust and strong anyway it's it's kind of like a hard material and pretty strong velcro holding it shut ta-da this retails for about 110 quid which i think is a bargain to be honest I'm sure solar panels were like the kind of things that only super villains in Bond films had. Maybe I'm going back to the 70s. Anyway, you get this lovely snazzy bag which uh, could double as a clutch. Foamery. So, well packaged, nice and sturdy. A bit like the kind of packaging you get around the Xbox. And, Kimmy. This is your warranty. Activate all that online, nice and simple. Power your better life with all powers. Now, to be honest, I've never heard of all powers, but when I started doing my research, I thought they make some really cool bits of kit. You can see a full range of all their power stations. Look at that beast. That's similar to the one that we took down to. Well, it was Goodwood, wasn't it? Thing is, that retailed for about 3,200 quid. This, 320 quid. Also, you get a discount if you enter this code. And that will give you a further 10% off. Let's have a proper look. Lovely finish. That's LED, USB A's, USB C's, and three pins, 12 volt. It's all very straightforward. You power it up using this. Each one of these powers up separately. So you can turn on your USBs and you can turn on your three pins. I've not even pulled off the cellophane. Must resist. If I turn it round, you will see this is where you charge it. So you can put your solar panels there and a good old fashioned kettle lead there. You do get one in the bag, as well as all the cables that you need for the solar panel. It's all very straightforward. As far as power stations go, it's not too heavy. And solid construction. I'm not gonna start taking it to bits, but you can hold it like that. So if you do need to do a small jog with it, you're all good. All the kind of things that I might have to do if I've got to rush over and say charge a camera really quickly. Nice smooth edges, because obviously this is molded plastic. But no, it's very good. It's got four feet and handy information printed on the bottom. You can see where it ventilates to. Let's power up, hold down. We can see we've got 99% of battery. To turn on the light, same with three pins. Pure sine wave, you just about hear it. Like most power stations, unless you spend closer to a grand, you won't be able to boil things like a kettle because they use immense power. I tried it, it just went, no. But we expect that. The thing is, I can charge things like my mountain bike, laptops, camera battery chargers, all manner of things, all whilst charging my iPhone. Now, there is a margin of error on where you put it, but if you get it, so you can see it's on charge. I'm no good at plugging in USBs. I just always forget. 
but it's far easier for me to just chuck my phone on there. Now to charge wirelessly, you do need to have the USB button enabled. Now all powers have been rather clever when it comes to protecting each of the jacks. Sadly, because these are three pin, this rubber bit fouls when you plug it in. It'd be nice to see on future models that they moved this. It will go in, but you do have to move this rubber right to the right. Let's try the Bosch charger for my electric mountain bike. So, just pull the rubber right to one side. And yeah, this plug's a little wider, so it won't fully go in. My solution, take off the rubber things. Primarily, it wasn't for this market, so I can understand why that was an oversight. The thing is, that's the only thing we found wrong with it. Everything else, it works seamlessly. Also, it uses lithium iron phosphate, which is one of the best battery technologies out there. We've seen that in BYD. A lithium iron phosphate battery, or LIFE PO4, is inherently safer than a lithium iron one, as they are less likely to overheat or catch fire primarily due to its composition. It's also more durable, lasting around four to five times longer, giving it a lifespan of around 10 years. You can use yours to power up to 10 devices at the same time, and it's robust enough to perform in a wide range of temperatures. It's rather quiet too. At its loudest, it will only emit 30 decibels of sound, which is just above rustling leaves and a gentle breeze. And that's when using the inverter. Let's start plugging things in and see how it starts caning and power. Let's plug in an iPhone. And one on top, 98%. So it's used 1% with us messing about and just testing numerous things. Let's power up the USBs and power up the three pins. And I can hear the whir of the R600. Why not the light? Now this was one of my questions. Would it have enough power to charge an electric mountain bike? Because this has got Bosch technology. So it's not one of those, shall we say, cost-effective solutions to mountain biking. If we go to the screen, see it's charging. I may well do 40 to 60 miles on this in various riding modes, but if I've got that in the boot of the car, I can top it up. So if you look at the screen, you can see there's little icons. Number one gives you the percentage of charge. Number two is the input power number. Number three is the output power number. Number four is the AC output hertz number. Number five is the time remaining, and it also shows you the fault codes if there are any. Number six is the power saving mode icon. Number seven, the fast charge icon. Number eight is the mute mode. Number nine shows you the output overload icon. Number 10 is the DC indicator. 11 is the AC indicator. 12 shows you the UPS indicator. 13 is the fan. 14 shows you the car charge output icon. And 15 is the Bluetooth icon. Now we've got all four devices running, so iPhone on the wireless, iPhone on the USB, laptop running, and it's running Premiere, so it'll be using mega power in comparison to just ticking over, and the bike, and that's flashing on two bars. And the output has increased, I think it's about 120, and that's watts. And the percentage has dropped to 78. We'll unplug everything and just leave the bike on and see how much 100% charge puts into my bike. And now the power delivery has dropped down to 69 watts, and it's sat on 96%. According to this, three hours of charge, got six miles. Now let's take a deeper look at the specifications. You can charge it with a car charger. The capacity of the R600, 299 watt hours and 600 watts. Now I've seen a lot of power stations, a lot of tech, this kind of thing. I mean, we do a lot of work with electric car companies. We also get sent some rather interesting things, but it's the first time I've heard of all powers, but I'm rather impressed with what they've given us. The solar panel and the R600, and it works seamlessly. Now they are a Chinese company and they are based out of Guangzhou. And many years ago, Annabelle and I did some work for a couple of companies in Guangzhou. So we're at 93%, three to go. Now let's just go into the basics of a power station. Primarily you've got the battery, this obviously makes up the bulk of the system. Then you've got the MPPT. Now this is what converts the power from the solar panel and allows it to turn into, well, battery juice. And then you've got the inverter. So batteries are 12 volts. So to be able to use 240 volts, you have to step it up. And you know it's doing that when you hear this whirring. It's rather quiet considering what it's having to do. And watts are a unit of power. Watt hours are a unit of energy. Now to put it in layman's terms, you can charge any device on this up to 600 watts, but it can actually boost up to 1200 watts. Now certain devices need a boost to start them up and then we'll run at say uh, 600, 500. Now, if you use that flat out, 
it would take around 30 minutes to completely deplete it. And before you ask, yes, there is an app. So you can see what this little beast is doing. This can be used as a UPS, so uninterruptible power source. If you're wanting to use the R600 as a UPS, it'll take about 10 milliseconds to switch over. And when you've got one of these in your arsenal, well, you're pretty much sorted for any eventuality. Bar boiling a kettle. You can now see the screen's gone off. If I press this once, it'll light up, and I can see we're down to 89%. Okay, perfect. Let's start charging. Now overcast isn't cutting it, so what we're gonna do to get up nice and early tomorrow morning and try this in the morning sun. Now here's the important bit. You get 6,000 cycles to 50% capacity, 3,500 cycles to 80% capacity. You can daisy chain the solar panels to considerably reduce your charging time. The maximum that can be combined are three of those panels, 300 watts. 78%. It'll be interesting to see what that puts on now. So yeah, we're flashing on two bars. We'll revisit it in probably three or four hours. When the bike's full, it will stop anyway. Also, this will stop charging. 72% of charge and it's using about 66 watts of output. And you can see the on switch pulsing. Still flashing on two bars. Well, we've now flattened it and it's time to recharge. No wonder it fast charges. 311 watt input now. It says recharge and one hour. So it looks like it gets faster. A bit like a rapid charger with a car. This is fully charged once again. If you look at this, three bars of charge, 36 miles of range in eco. Now with a bit of luck, we'll be able to work out if this would be able to do it on a full charge. Yep, the third battery sign's flashing too. Right, we'll check back, no, an hour or so. 43% of battery, still at about 75 output. So it's got one hour left. And we're now at four bars. So 95% has put on about 28 miles. So you're talking a charge and a half to top up my bike. That's not bad. It's not quite as good as I estimated. Now, interestingly, if I press this to power up the plug again, it's not up for it. So that makes me think 5% is too little. Now, what we'll do tomorrow, instead of charging this with a power pack now, is we'll wait for a sunny morning tomorrow. Here's hoping. Amazing. After three days of winds and heavy rain, the sunshine has graced us with its presence. I hope it's got its hat on. As we established the other day, you do need direct sunlight in order for this to work. Therefore, this should now go seamlessly. If you unzip this pocket, you will find the cables you need already connected. First things first. Unzip, open and position. Connect the solar panels to the power cable, then plug the power cable into the R600. And don't worry, you can't plug it in the wrong way. Now you're connected and ready to go. It's that easy. Ben? You're up. One thing to note when using this, make sure it's not too windy. You've secured, stacked them against something so they don't blow over. But no, success Annabelle. Ooh, the input's increasing, 21. Thing is with both of these facing, looks like we're getting 20 watts off each panel or thereabouts. 43 watts input, nice. The only thing that you need to remember is that it will take a fair bit longer to charge the unit using the solar panels. The more solar panels you have, the bigger the charge your R600 unit gets. That's not bad if you'll say, on a campsite or parked up you've just got this running in the background and these just pointing at the sun free energy yeah man normally the r600 retails for 319 pounds 99p however it's on offer at the moment for 239.99 there are two to choose from beige and black here at planet auto we want to make sure that we can save you money so we sorted out a sweet deal with all powers on the r600 unit and the solar panels. Click on the links in the description below, it'll take you straight to the right page, type in the code Planet Auto, and it saves you a further 10%, and that is valid until the end of the year. Also, you can spread out your payments with Klarna. This code is valid until the end of this year. Thanks so much for joining us. Honestly, do come back and tell us how you got on, because if this is the kind of thing that you want in your arsenal, you can't really go wrong. The unit of this size, this caliber, this price, and this capability.